Hello and welcome to the Estherform tutorial. It's reasonably straightforward without my help, but sometimes it can seem a little daunting when you come across something you never had to do before. Ester stands for Electronic System for Travel Authorization. And if you're going to be traveling to the United States of America at any time, then you will need to go online and fill out this form. The official site is this one which should match the URL at the top here. There are various other sites which are third party and will be charging you an additional fee but on the official site here you will only be paying for the ESTA. The current price at this point in time is $14 which is about £11 in British money. You need to be doing this at least three days which is 72 hours before travelling to the United States. Now this is just a guide for you and the actual site can alter as time goes on so please double check for yourself to see that you are happy with everything. Once it's approved it lasts for two years from the date that you applied. OK let's get started. If you already have an existing application and want to update then you can click on the white box but for everybody that wants a new application click on the blue box. That takes you to this section. Now do read all the information on the left and you will need your passport at the ready. Also don't forget to take your passport as well as the ESTA when travelling. You now have a choice of an individual or group application. I'm just going to take you through the individual so click on the blue tab. I would advise you to take some time reading any notifications that you see before moving on. And once you're happy with that, then click confirm and continue. Now we're on the disclaimer page. And again, do read the information before you click within the yes circle, which you may have to click twice for some reason. Once you've done that, click the next button. Right, you're now on section two which is the applicant information page. So the first thing to do is to type in the family name, which is your surname. I'm just putting it in a fictitious name, but you'll be putting in your own one. And only you know what that is. The reason I'm saying this is that I don't want anyone to get carried away and literally copy everything I've just done. I'm sure you won't. So his first name is Richard, and then we go on to the gender box, which is male in this case. We move down to the question, are you known by any other aliases? And it means literally that. Some people may be called a different name to their real name, in which case this would need to be filled in. But let's just assume like most people that the answer is no. And then we move on to the date and birth. So it's your date of birth that goes here. And you get to this by simply clicking onto those tiny little arrows within the drop-down menu boxes. The city of birth is also your town of birth. It doesn't say it, but that's what it means. Next, it's another drop-down menu box which asks for your country of birth. And in this case, it's the United Kingdom, but obviously it's whatever country you were born in. Passport number next, and you'll find this at the top right corner. Next up is country of citizenship and in this case is UK British citizen or whatever citizenship you are. The issuance date is next which you'll find on the main page of your passport as well as the expiration date. It all has to be filled in and don't forget the issuing country needs to be done which is to the right of these. Again, it's still UK British citizen uh, in this particular case, but not necessary if it was issued in another country. Have you ever been issued a passport or national identity card for travel by any other country? If yes, then those grey boxes below will turn clear and you'll be required to fill those out. If no, then we move on. Are you now a citizen or national of any other country? 
and again if it's yes then you need to fill out the appropriate boxes if no we come to a similar question but this time it's now asking have you ever been a citizen or national of any other country if your answer is yes then the grey box will turn clear and you use the drop down menu search for the correct country otherwise it's no GE membership are you a member of the GBP global entry program well you'll certainly know if you are and if not it's another no now you need to enter both your parents names into the relevant boxes it doesn't matter who goes first but here we'll start with the father and then the mother now if your mother's surname is different from your father's for any reason then that should be the one to be entered if she never got married then it would be her maiden name now we're on to the contact information this is where you input your address so if it's a house in the street then that's the first line however it may be an apartment block or something similar in which case and let's just suppose that it is then we make line one possibly the name of the house address line two will now be the number and street or road or wherever don't worry if you only need to use one box just make sure it's the first one in fact anything with a red asterisk must be filled uh, must be filled in anything else is optional so there we go the apartment number The city of course you know that it also means town and the state province region is your county and don't forget the country i know it does seem like you are repeating yourself a lot but it's important to get this right now it's your telephone number and the first part is the type of telephone so in this case it's home telephone number then it's the country code which for the United Kingdom is 44, so you put in 44. Then whatever your number is in the large box, and make sure you include the area code as well. The email address is also compulsory. However, if for some reason that you don't have an email address of your own, then you may need to speak to somebody you know to get you sorted with your own one. It also needs you to confirm your email underneath and I will say don't take the easy route when you might be tempted to copy and paste the upper section to the lower because just in case you may have made one tiny mistake then you've just copied that mistake without realizing it this next one is new to me it's a social media one whether it be Facebook Twitter or YouTube However, you'll be glad to know that at this point in time it is optional so we can choose to skip this section and move on to the employment information. Now this asks if you have a current or previous employer. If you tick yes, then it's just a simple case of putting in your job title or what you do or what you have done. Some with employers names which could be a company name, the address, city, also meaning the town of your workplace. If you do not have a current employer or previous employer, or if you are self-employed, then the answer is no. You click the blue button, next. Now we're on to page three. And the first part of this asks is your travel to the US occurring in transit to another country. Now this means if you are traveling through the United States to another country, if so, then you have to put yes. But if you're traveling to the US and staying, then the answer is no. Okay, you got that. Now here comes an interesting part. Let's just assume that you've already booked your holiday or vacation, then you need to get the address of where you are staying, whether it's a villa or hotel. Now I'm gonna pick a hotel in Florida. I put the name of the hotel, then the actual number, which is a high number 5905, that's the, the number of the, the building. The street name is International Drive. The city or town is Orlando. The state is Florida, uh, but FL will do nicely. 
and then it's the zip code which as most of you know is a postcode. The next one is the address while in the US and if it happens to be the same as the point of contact then just tick that little box which then fills out the rest for you and you move on to the emergency contact section. Now this can be anyone in the US or possibly back home, a mother, father, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, daughter, friend, whoever you choose, but whoever you choose, but this section must be filled. And once you've done that, then click next. Now we're almost through, but we need to go through these questions which just require a yes or no. Obviously you must answer truthfully as you move down. And then you click onto the next section which gives you a chance to check everything is correct or if you have to edit a section then you can do so right here without having to go back. Once you're happy with it all then it's a case of clicking to the final page number six which is where you pay by credit or debit cards and at the moment they will charge you fourteen dollars. Don't worry as it will instantly convert it to the UK equivalent or whatever country you're in which is £11 at the moment. Once you've made payment you will possibly see almost straight away if the authorisation is successful. It might also say something like authorisation of application pending in which case you can check back later as sometimes processing can take longer but on saying that it could be worth checking again 20 minutes later and the way to do that is by going to the original start screen where we came in and this time click on the white box for checking existing applications you'll be asked for your passport number and a couple of other questions that you had already submitted like your date of birth and name etc if for some reason that the application has been rejected then a charge of only four dollars will be made from here on you will be advised to contact the United States Embassy. I will say at this juncture that this is just purely a demonstration to give some idea how to fill out the ESTA form. Although I believe I have demonstrated as well as possible, I could still be incorrect in some cases. So I would ask that you double check before submitting the form as I can't be held responsible for errors. I do hope that this has been of great help to you, if so please subscribe, give it a thumbs up and do check out my channel for uploads of Florida and Southern California theme parks and surrounding areas. I'll see you all on YouTube.